Welcome to Lecture Online, and in our quest to understand the photon, now let's go look at one of the most famous experiments done, not only because the result experiment was so enormously important, but also of who did the experiment. It was, it was Einstein, and Einstein received the Nobel Prize for this particular experiment. It was called the photoelectric effect, and it reveals an enormous amount about the photon. It turns out that that is exactly why Einstein received the Nobel Prize, because he actually proved to this experiment that photons were quantized pieces of energy. So how did it work? Well, here's a simplistic diagram of the experiment. So here we had a evacuated glass tube. We had a cathode on one side and we have an anode on the other side and we have a big battery right here providing the negative end to the cathode and the positive end to the anode so there would be an electric field across here. And then the experiment would then shine the light on the cathode and of course the energy of the photons in the light, which was the, what was presumed, then was going to strike the cathode, set electrons free. Remember that electrons can absorb the energy of photons, so it would then set electrons free. Once they're set free from the metal, which is called overcoming the work function, and for a typical metal, the work function would be about 2.5 electron volts, which means each electron would have to be given 2.5 electron volts worth of energy to jump free from the cathode, and then the electric field will zip the electrons across to the positive anode over here, causing a current to flow. And of course, if you then would put a current meter in here, I for current meter, you can then uh, notice how much current there was. But it turns out that the amount of energy that each electron requires being 2.5 electron volts, now that we know that photons are quantized, we can then calculate what the energy would have to be for each photon, which of course would be 2.5 electron volts, and which then would be the corresponding wavelength of that photon. So if we say that energy of a photon is H times F, Planck's constant times the frequency, and since the frequency is the speed of light divided by the wavelength, we can solve this for the wavelength, so the wavelength of a photon required to set an electron free from the cathode would have to be a wavelength of 497 nanometers or shorter. Remember, higher energy photons can set electrons free, but anything below the energy required to set, to set an electron free, that electron would not jump free and no current would flow. Now, from the classic point of view, when people didn't believe that photons were quantized chunks of energy, that light was simply a wave, electromagnetic wave, the assumption would be that if you shine light on it of wavelengths that are greater than this, therefore less energy per photon, that you still should have a current because the energy would simply accumulate and the electrons would eventually accumulate enough energy to set to jump free. But it turns out when the light was, for example, a red light with wavelengths much longer than 497 nanometers, no electrons would be set free, none of them would overcome the work function, and no current would be seen whatsoever. No matter how strong, how intense you made the red light, a very strong red light would still not set a single, uh, single electron free, and no current could be seen. A weak light that had wavelengths smaller than this, 497 nanometers or smaller, like blue light, even if you set it on a very weak setting, so the light was not very intense, a current would be seen. And then as you began to crank up the intensity of the light, more and more electrons would be jumping across, more and more electrons would be set free on the cathode, they would overcome the work function as they absorb the photons, and therefore you'd see a steady current. That experiment, called the photoelectric effect, is what Einstein used to show that photons were indeed quantized chunks of energy. And so that gave us a tremendous insight of what photons are. Of course, at this point, we're still not quite sure what they look like, how long are they, how many can you put in a box, so forth. Well, we'll get to that. But at least now we can see that this experiment, once and for all, proved that photons were quantized. And that the only way that electrons could be set free is if each electron absorbed one single photon containing the right amount of energy to set free. With other words, a minimum energy equal to the work function or equal and above the work function would set an electron free. So you send 10 photons down with the amount of energy required, 10 electrons would jump free. A thousand photons, a thousand electrons would jump free. But you can send a billion photons down, each of them having not enough energy, wavelengths longer than this, and no electrons would set, be set free because Electrons can only absorb the energy within each photon, and if it's not enough, it can't jump free, it cannot overcome the work function. So, that gives us some more insight as to what photons are. Still interested? Keep tuned, 
and we'll show you some other really neat experiments that were done that give us more and more insight as to what a photon is.